What's yellow and black and buzzes like a box full of angry Behringer haters? It's the Wasp Deluxe! Hiya kids, how you doing? The Wasp Deluxe is yet another of Behringer's reproduction mono synths from the great days of the late 70s, early 80s. This time it was a classic made by a small British company called the Electronic Dream Plant. At the time of release they weren't very successful but as with all things analogue Behringer seemed to have found a raft of people who enjoy making life difficult for themselves and embraced old technology, myself being amongst that number. It's a fairly straightforward subtractive synth with two oscillators, an LFO, a filter section and two envelopes. The oscillator section is fairly self-explanatory and true to its 70s roots, the coarse tuning is labelled in terms of feet lengths. They range from 32 to 2 and this gives you either a really bassy rumble on a square wave right the way up to something that's almost toy-like. The two oscillators can be mixed and one can be tuned against the other. They can also both be turned off, which leaves the only sound source as a noise generator. The next section is the LFO section, which they've labelled the control oscillator. And that's where you'll find the noise level control. And another control, which routes the LFO to the pitch. There's a frequency control which adjusts the rate of the LFO. Then you have a, a choice of six wave shapes. And I particularly like the round setting, which generates a random signal, like a sample and hold, and takes me straight back to the 70s sci-fi soundtracks of my youth. And another control, which routes the LFO to the filter section, has either a positive or a negative value. The filter is switchable and ranges from a low pass to a high pass with both a band and a notch filter in between.
There is of course a filter cut off level. and resonance control which is labelled as Q. elements are the envelope generators and there's two of those both of which have a quite a cunning little trick associated with them. The envelopes themselves are fairly simple just an attack and decay and a sustain level. One envelope for the amplitude and one for the filter. which has got a control that sets either a positive or negative value for how much the envelope affects the filter cutoff. What I was really impressed with was the repeat setting on the envelopes. This just opens and closes the envelope repeatedly, meaning that you can use it as almost an extra LFO, the rate of which is controlled by the attack and decay amount. Both the amplitude envelope and the filter envelope have this repeat setting. but the amplitude envelope also has a toggle switch which holds the note. And this can make it incredibly useful for generating drone sounds. Finally, we have volume controls, a master pitch control, and a really very useful and delightful glide control. I really quite like this synth. I've not had it long, and to be honest, it didn't tick all the boxes for me. There's no built-in sequencer, and that's one of the things that I tend to look for in my synths. However, having made some adjustments to my setup recently, I'm not so worried about that. The tracks has made a bit of a difference in that now I think about it as having two MIDI channels to control separate outboard synthesizers. The Crave and the Wasp have made me think about a different way of managing my workflow and possibly introducing some different elements into the way that I work. The Wasp sounds really nice and it absolutely exudes 70s sci-fi synth craziness from such classics as Blake 7 and Doctor Who and I can see why it was named the Wasp because it has a certain savage, buzzy element to it. The filter is also quite impressive, although not 
quite as rich and resonant as Crave and doesn't give you the warm fuzzies in quite the same way. It is really incredibly capable and of course there are more settings that you can use with the addition of the band pass and the notch filter. Careful use of the saw wave and the filters can give you some really quite nice vocal sounding effects. It's a quality addition to my Sonic Arsenal and as a simple dual oscillator subtractive mono synth it doesn't really go wrong. Again it's another one that if you're just getting into synthesis makes the workflow and the routing of subtractive synthesis very simple and very easy to understand and work with. Okay kids, I hope you enjoyed. If it's your first time here, I think you need to subscribe because you made it to the end. Please press the like button because that really helps with other people finding this video. And talking of other people finding this video, make sure you share it around. As they say, at the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation, share and enjoy. Bye.